Mike here. Welcome to part episode three of uh, Red's How to Minecraft Mods. And this is part one of episode three. And we are doing the big reactors mod. So let's first start out with a ore generation item that will be generated into your world, which will be yellow right ore. You can find these pretty much anywhere when you're underground, and they usually come up in big clusters. Um, not as big as coal, but relatively large clusters, because you're going to need a lot of this. In order to make an ingot, you take the yellow right ore, and you stick it in a furnace with a fuel source, and you get one yellow lorium ingot. You can also, if you have a capability in your uh, mod pack or mod that you're using that has a pulverizer, you can also pulverize this down into uh, yellow eulorium dust and it does the same thing, it'll smelt down that way. And it's getting night. Yeah, blar. Anyways, the next item you're going to need is a graphite bar. In order to make a graphite bar, you either need coal, charcoal, or graphite powder. In a furnace with a piece of fuel will give you one graphite bar. Both of these items you're going to need a good amount of, mostly you're going to need a lot of eulorium um, Yellorium, yellorite, or yellorium, I call it yellorium, yellorite ingots in order to make the items for the reactor itself. And this is the uh, reactor casing. This is also another item you're going to need a lot of, so which means you need a lot of graphite, a lot of iron, and a lot of yellorite, yellorium uh, ingots. I keep saying yellorite. I don't know why. Uh, I guess that's what I usually, I call it, I call it that for some serious reason. But, um, yeah, so this is this power source is an, a very strong power source, but it's also an expense can be tend tend to be expensive power source as well. You're gonna need, like I said, you're gonna need a lot of yellowium before you start this because half of it is gonna go into making the reactor stuff, and the other half is gonna be used into making um, the fuel. So, I mean, 64 ingots is gonna last you a while for a fuel source, depending on what the type of power outage you're using and how big your reactor is going to be. So, as I said, you're going to need a reactor casings, and that's the recipe for that. Uh, next recipe takes the reactor casings along with yellow orium ingots, or yellow right, yellow orium, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, four cornered pieces of reactor casings, two yellow orium ingots, and a diamond in the middle, and a redstone will give you one reactor controller. The reactor controller is the brains of the operations, so that's an important piece. You'll need, at least need one of these, and uh, one of these parts, and one of those parts, and I'll explain more on that later. Um, next up item is a yellowium fuel rod. This is the power, this is where the fuel will go into. Just like a nuclear power plant, they have fuel rods that they put the uranium or whatever. Um, the recipe is iron ingots on the side, six iron ingots, two graphite bars, and a yellowium ingot in the middle. You'll also need this for other recipes as well, so be prepared for that as well. Next recipe is reactor control rod, um, reactor casing, is needed again for the four corners. Uh, graphite bars and upside down bucket shape, and a redstone piece in the middle, and a yellowium. A yellow, yellowium. Keep saying it. Whatever. I'm just gonna say yellow right from now on, guys. <laughs> the yellowium at the bottom gives you one control rod. You're gonna need one of these per uh, fuel rod setup, because that is where it'll control the uh, cooling system. Um, also, I'll explain that more when we get down to it. Next item is a reactor the power tap. This is where you get pull the power out of the reactor. And in order to make this, you need a reactor casing in the corners and a redstone diamond. Very simple recipe. Next up is you're going to need a reactor access port. You're going to need this. This will. This is how you feed the fuel into the reactor. Again, four cornered uh, casing, a chest, and a piston. Next up is the fuel reactor coolant port. This isn't really 100% necessary. I've never used it but I'll explain it more. The recipe again is four corners of reactor casings, two iron ingots on the side, a bucket in the middle, and a piston on the bottom. What this does is you can feed coolant into your reactor via uh, Ender IO or thermal expansion if thermal expansion ever puts its pipes back into its pack again. Um, next, or anything that adds can be, let any mod that lets fuel be piped in. Uh, almost any mod. I can't say every mod, but you know, a good majority of them. Next item up is a reactor glass. You're also going to need this if you want to see inside your reactor. And it's two pieces of glass, normal Minecraft glass, and a reactor casing. Um, next up is a uh, cyanite ingot. And in order to do that is you need more eulorium and a piece of sand. That's one cyanite ingot. Cyanite ingots are going to be more built towards making the um, turbine. I don't usually use turbines because what I make, the size I make usually for this big reactor, 
usually is enough to power me. But if you've got a multiplayer server and you happen to have mods on it, or you have a large group of you know small, well still, or a large community that you want to power up, you know, w with your mind, or not with your mind, but you want to power up a large community build, but you're only a single player, then maybe you want to think in turbines. But really, it's my opinion, it's not really necessary. But I'll explain turbines as well. And turbines is an, another recipe with four iron ingots in the corners, and replacing the yellow right out with a cyanide ingot, and then you have two nether quartz and two graphite bars. Again, this is going to be also needed like the reactor casing. It does also the same principle when you build it as well. The turbine glass does exactly the same thing. It makes glass. It's just the glass for a turbine engine. Um, ignore the empty spot. Next item is a blue wool polonium ingot and uh, in order to make that you need a cyanide repossessor with at least a thousand uh, power and that's what, I what the redstone represents one water bucket and one cyanide ingot if you look up the recipe for it it says a thousand mega buckets of water and that's what a, a bucket is in minecraft is a thousand millibuckets or mega buckets or whatever the hell you want to call it mbs that's what one bucket equals to and a cyanide ingot you're going to need this for the brains of the turbine, and you're going to need two balloonium ingots, so that means two buckets of water, 2,000 in power, and a cyanide ingot, more housing, and a diamond in the middle. Go over here, we're going to fly over. Next item is the power port, just like the um, reactor's one. Same recipe, except for you remove the reactor casing housing and replace it with turbine housing. The, ac the fluid port. There is no access port like the other one. An item access port is a, just a fluid port, and this does the sa same exact recipe as the fluid one for the reactor, except for you switch out with turbine housing. Uh, this is the turbine itself, the rotor shaft. Uh, this is the recipe. You need cyanide ingot, and you need a turbine rotor bearing for at least the top. This is like the this is the reactor co control rod, and these are this is the um, control rod, and this is the reactor itself. And this is the uh, blade that goes along with it. And I'm sorry, I didn't go through the recipe. More turbine housings in the corners, and two turbine rotor shafts, and some diamonds. This recipe is just a cyanide ingot in the front, and two iron ingots in the back. Just makes one, so remember you're gonna need that. And as I said earlier, you're gonna need a you want a fuel rod for something, and it will be a cyanide rep uh, reprocessor, which gives you two reactor, four reactor components on each side, an iron ingot at the top, a uh, yellow iron fuel rod redstone and two pistons. And these two are just creative items so if you play on a creative world they do the same thing but it gives it a, probably a creative effect. A lot of powered games have these creative items in there. Uh, I don't play much enough creative to really use them but I thought I put them there. There's no recipe for them but that's what they look like. And last but not least is the Ludicrite block which is a very expensive block made out of both Bolonium emerald blocks, a nether star, and two ender pearls. This is used as a insulator. I will put down in the wiki, uh, down below the wiki to the Feed the Beast. Um, the reason why I put that down below because it gives you a good good list of different um, cooling aspects to cool down your reactor, different uh, temperatures, and what does the best and what doesn't do the best. And they cover a lot of uh, different mods that are added in there. So let's go over to the reactor itself. A uh, little signage here. The smallest reactor size is a three by three by three. The smallest uh, turbine size is three by four by three. So what that means is a three by three bottom plate, a three tall, and a three wide. I usually make a five by five by five because it 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 gives me the ability to add five control rods into it and and five uh, ylorium rods in there for fuel. Uh, this may be a little too OP if you're just beginning off in your world and you build this you just might need one but it gives you the space to expand into the other four um, trust me certain items that will c require a lot of power like say a um, ender quarry does require a lot of power this can provide a lot of power to the ender quarry um, and it could also provide power to the rest of your building and your rest of your um, machines uh, caveat for this, this thing only puts out RF power, so if anything uses anything other than RF power, you're going to have to use a mod specific power source within it. Say I, if you have a mod in your pack, like IE, IC2, IC2 uses MJs, IC2 provides its own power source. There are mods that add a power tap to this that um, would convert to RF to MJs. But the problem about that mod pack that I found, it's complicated as hell in order to create it, and I haven't found a good a good version to explain it to me. 
and so yeah I'm not gonna cover that mod I think it I'm not factorization but something like factorization where there's a power port in there but the only way I could ever get it to work is I have to turn around and just cheat it in and I never really use that so if I have an RF if I have both IC and something that uses RF this will convert this will be the RF power and I'll do like solar powers for the um, IC2 so how does this work well you take uh, a stack of your, it doesn't have to be a stack, but for uh, as many fuel rods are in there, I recommend a stack, and you sit them in there, and it leaves you with four uh, ingots left. So five takes up 60 ingots altogether, five fuel rods. Um, you're going to add a coolant in there, and let's go get some coolant, the only basic coolant we have, so not lava, water. And what you could do is, as you can see here, you could see the look of this um, reactor. That's telling you that the reactor is complete properly. If you remove a block, you can tell it goes back to the normal reactor blocks, and it will should tell you what's the matter, why there's no uh, proper blockage. So uh, you could fill up the chambers like so with water, and they will in turn. Um, let me switch it today. They in turn will uh, help it cool it down more. Uh, the fluid port also does that as well. It injects fluid into the system to keep it cool. Uh, but you need a uh, piping and a, a uh, pump source to pump it into. So, and that's about, that's just that on the coolant system. And you go on, this is the GUI. As you can see, it's kind of cool looking. It actually would make you think it's a real nuclear power plant. And it tells you the temperature and the millibucket per tick of heat uh, fluid or hot fluid output. Uh, millibuckets per tick of uh, fuel burn-up rate, and of course fuel uh, reactivity, how aerated the items are. As you can see, we have a full uh, core, everything's full, and then you have a casing heat, which is the outside, and then you also have the uh, core heat, which is the inside that you see inside the rod itself. Just works like a normal nuclear, like a, on the concept of an actual nuclear power plant. So. What this does, not only, mostly usually nuclear power plants will have a device like this, which will heat up water, and then the water will be pumped into a turbine system. Hence why they probably put a turbine system in there. But this also gives off power as its own. And it uses an energy buffer. As you can see, it's an RF. Uh, right now it's offline. If I go down to here, it will auto eject the waste. I can have that on or I can have it off. And I have the activate reactor. This is the button you turn it on with. And as you can see, the power and the heat begin to rise. And the more heat you have, the less, the more, um, the struck, the more breakdown there is. Um, like I said, right now it's at five fuel rods. If you're just starting off, you can just maybe need one fuel rod in order to do what you need to do. Um, let that turn that off and let that cool down so it doesn't uh, go Chernobyl on us. I do apologize if you lived anywhere near that, but that's the best way. Or Three Mile Island. There, there's an American version of the. <laughs> A, a nuclear power plant going meltdown but I don't believe it does that it's just something that a nuclear power plant would do um, at the top you can actually if I can get back up here use uh, control rods which will actually lower a rod insertion which will um, higher the insertion will slower the rate and that's actually kind of how it works in a nu real nuclear power plant so you drop it down or insert the rod and it, usually they're cooling rods which will slow the uh, decay and uh, the output of the reactor. Next up is a turbine itself. Like I said, I don't use these because really the more output that comes out of this, I don't find any need for any more than that. But this is just will expand your output. Um, this is a 5x5x5x5 five by five by five by five, as that is. I actually have the coolant port on the side uh, the fluid port for this inject inject into this, and what a react turbine does is you'll take uh, hot steam or hot water, and it'll run through and go against the blades, and the blades blades will cause friction, and that turbine will power the output just like in a normal nuclear reactor. So, but I don't use this, so I probably miss out on a lot of things saying you know what this does, what this doesn't do, and so forth and so forth, but. I, like I said, I don't ever find a use for need of a turbine, and I just broke it. I went to punch and show. I don't use this all that much. This is more than enough power for my simple needs when I play modded. Because like I said, usually when I play a mod pack, it's going to have probably IC2 in it, with a good majority of chance of having IC2 in it. So I'm going to have two power supplies, this and then a nuclear power supply, 
another nuclear power supply or a solar power. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed. That's it for me today. Um, leave a like, uh, comment down below. Um, if you miss, if I missed anything, please let me know down below. Um, uh, let's see, dislike if you didn't like this episode, uh, and uh, subscribe if you really enjoy this and you want to see more. I'm not, you know, looking for anybody to force anybody into subscribing. So, you know, views are great. I don't particularly subscribers are also great too, but there's benefits. So. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, stay tuned for part two. Bye-bye.